Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss how to spot a cheap suit and the eight visual hallmarks of a bad suit. No, we're not talking about fit. You're right. Fit in a suit is paramount, but we discuss how a suit should fit in this video series here. In this video, I want to provide you with a checklist so you can spot a cheap suit, especially when you're at a store. The first hallmark of a cheap suit, and something I always check for when I see a suit in person, is the collar seam. For that, you flip up the collar and you look at the seam underneath. On a cheap suit, this seam will always be machine made. So how can you tell it's a machine made stitch? Usually it's like a very regular triangle versus a handmade stitch is irregular. So take a closer look and see if the stitches are exactly the same or if they're irregular and handmade. Of course, there are variations, so you have to train your eye, but it's a very easy way to identify a suit that way. If it has a handmade stitch, it's not a cheap suit. If it's machine made, it's likely cheap. The second hallmark are buttonholes. To most people, a buttonhole is just that, it's functional, but to the connoisseur, a buttonhole tells you a lot about the suit. It can even tell you where a suit was made. So the big distinction is handmade buttonhole or machine sewn buttonhole. If it's a handmade buttonhole, it's not a cheap suit. You can identify a handmade buttonhole by flipping over the buttonhole from the back, and if it's irregular, it is handmade. If it's machine made, it is very, very regular and it looks about the same as it does in the front. That being said, you can also have a really crappy sewn handmade buttonhole, which doesn't make for a nice suit. There are a lot more intricacies with handmade buttonholes, but we'll cover those in another video. When you see a machine made buttonhole, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a cheap suit. However, there are two different kinds. There's the kind where the buttonhole is cut and then sewn, which is the neater way and the more high quality way and the more expensive way, or there is a way where a buttonhole is sewn and then cut, or maybe sometimes not even cut, but just left closed. If you encounter a closed buttonhole or a hole where you can see frays because it hasn't been cut all the way, or maybe it has been cut all the way, but there's lots of fraying and you can see the fabric on the inside of the buttonhole, it means it is a cheap buttonhole. It's the cheapest way to sew a buttonhole and you'll likely have a cheap suit in your hand when you see that. The third hallmark of a cheap suit is a lack of fabric reserve. Why would you need one? If you want to alter your garment, it's always good to have extra fabric, otherwise you cannot make anything bigger. On a cheap suit, the three and a half yards of fabric are probably the most expensive part in the entire suit, and so manufacturers try to cut corners and minimize the use of fabric wherever they can. The easiest way to find out if there's a fabric reserve is to look at the pants. Take the pants inside out and look at all the side seams as well as the cuffs on the inside. If there is half an inch, an inch or two inches, that's great and chances are it's not a cheap suit. If there's very little fabric left and it's just an overlock stitch that keeps the fabric from fraying, you likely have a cheap suit in your hand. If the suit has cuffs, you can also take a look at that because a proper cuff is long and folded and in theory you can take out the stitching and elongate your pants. A cheap cuff on the other hand is cut and then just attached, which saves fabric for the manufacturer, but it prevents you from elongating the pants at all. The fourth way to identify a cheap suit is by looking closely at the stitching. When I'm at a vintage store, I check those three hallmarks before then, and then I go to the stitching. First, I look at how the lining is sewn into the sleeve at the end of the sleeve. If it's sewn in by hand, it's likely a quality suit. If it's sewn in by machine, it's different. There are two kinds. On the one hand, you can have it sewn in so there is no flexibility and that's a very cheap suit. On the other hand, you can sew it in by machine with a stitch that is very loose and it's a better way and it's also what you get with a handmade stitch. Since handwork can be very different and so can machine work, it may be a little harder for you to determine what is machine made and what is not. In general, if you have a high consistency, it always tells you it's machine sewn. Also, if there's no flexibility, leave it behind, it's gonna be a cheap suit. The fifth way to identify a cheap suit is the buttons. Most cheap suits have plastic buttons Sometimes the buttons look painted and it's because they are. 
On the other hand, I've also seen higher end plastic buttons that are made to look like horn buttons. And it's much more difficult to determine the difference. Sometimes you can take two buttons together and look for a specific sound. I find that works quite well with Mother of Pearl, for example, but that's rarely used for a suit. And horn buttons can sound exactly the same. So therefore, you have to look very closely at the button and touch it. Horn is usually a little heavier than plastic and has a nicer, smoother feel and a natural shine. Plastic, on the other hand, is bad because it breaks very easily and then you have to sew on new buttons and it's always hard to find an exact matching button and then you have to do it for all of them, which costs you a lot of money. Another quality option for buttons are Corozo buttons. They come from a palm tree and they have a slightly inconsistent color and they're not regular like a machine-made button, so you can distinguish them. The big advantage for them is that they can be colored in basically any color. So if there's no natural horn button, that's what quality manufacturers use. Plastic buttons are always for cheap suits. Another great way to spot a cheap suit is by identifying if it's a polyester lining or not. Quality suits have linings made out of Bamberg, sometimes viscose, which is a little less expensive. A higher end option would be silk. Sometimes you also see cotton, but very cheap suits have polyester lining or blends with polyester. By law, manufacturers are required to tell you what material the lining is made of, so look for tags inside the suit that tell you what the lining is made of. Polyester linings are not only cheap, but they also make you feel hot and they don't breathe very well, which makes for a very uncomfortable suit wearing experience. On top of that, they wear out quickly. So not only are they bad, but they're really great in helping you to identify if you have a piece of crap in front of you. The seventh way to identify a cheap suit is by the material composition of the outer fabric. Most quality suits are made out of 100% wool. The problem is manufacturers can sometimes add one or 2% of an artificial fiber and still call it 100%. In that case, you have to rely on the brand and look for a brand label. If you look for Italia Barbaris Canonico, maybe Holland and Sherry, Wayne and Scheele, Laura Piana, you name it, Xenia. If you see a tag like that, chances are you have a higher end suit in front of you. Of course, those tags can be faked and especially if you get suits made out of Asia, that may be the case. So buyer beware. Quality sewing materials can also be made out of wool and cashmere blends. Sometimes they have silk, sometimes they have linen. A seersucker suit is made out of 100% cotton. But overall, you want to make sure that the suit doesn't have any artificial fibers. No nylon or polyamide, no polyester or anything else that is not natural. If it's unnatural on the tag, chances are it's a very cheap suit. On top of that, artificial materials often have a tendency to make the suit shiny, which is very undesirable, unless it's a sophisticated natural fiber such as mohair. The eighth way to identify the cheap suit is to check for a glued or fused inner lining. Quality suits have a sewn inner lining, which is either hand sewn or machine sewn, and we talk about the details in our $100 versus $1,000 videos and $500 versus $5,000 videos here. When you have the suit in front of you, what you can do is you can take the upper layer of the fabric and pinch it with your finger. If you can actually remove this layer from the layer that's underneath of it and you can still feel it, it means you have a suit either with a canvas that was sewn. If that's not possible, it means you have a fused garment. Sometimes a fused garment is also a lot stiffer, especially if it's a cheaper suit. So if something doesn't drape well and feels very plasticky and thick, it's probably a cheap suit. If you follow all of these eight steps and you go to a store, I guarantee you, you'll be able to spot a cheap suit and you won't make the mistake and pay for something that is not worth it. Even if you use those eight hallmarks and you end up with a quality suit, it really matters that it fits you, otherwise it looks bad and it will reflect poorly on you. To learn more about suits and all its intricacies, please check out our entire series about suits, which will help you ending up with something that is worth its money, it will stand a test of time, last for a while, and make you feel and look like a million bucks. In today's video, I'm wearing a two-piece suit, double-breasted, 6-2, meaning six buttons, two wear clothing. It's a special Vitale Barberes Canonico fabric, which was made for the anniversary. It's extremely fine merino wool, it's three-ply. It is not quite a dark navy, but a lighter shade. It touches like cashmere, but unfortunately it also wrinkles a lot, which is often a problem of very fine, high-spun wool. 
Fortunately, with a bit of steam, the wrinkles come right out. The shirt I'm wearing is Italian. It's from Siniscalchi. It's very thin and summery and has a bold stripe in brown, light blue, yellow, and white. Because of that, I chose a pale yellow pocket square with a hand X stitch in both directions. It is made by Ford Belvedere and matches the stripe of the yellow in the shirt. That's why it ties everything together. The X stitching on the edges are hand rolled and very unique because usually you can only find single stitches there regular and it's something very special where you need to find a very highly trained artisan to be able to produce that. If you like that kind of pocket square, head over to our shop here. We even have different colors. The tie I'm wearing is vintage. It's a light blue with a large pattern. And because of that, it works quite well with a stripe which is quite bold on its own. The boutonniere is likewise from Fort Belvedere. It's handmade and hand dyed in Germany from silk. And it picks up the yellow tones in the pocket squares and the shirt. Because my suit is dark, I chose a dark green pinky ring and I combined it with solid monkey fist cufflinks that are also gold. You can find them in our shop here. For my socks, I didn't have a pair of solid socks that matched exactly the color of the pants. That's why I went with the shadow stripe blue and navy socks from Fort Belvedere that you can wear with any kind of navy pants in a formal business setting because they will always work with it because the color tones just work much better than solids and it will always be office appropriate. In line with the warmer tones of my pocket square and my shirt, I went with a darker cognac pair of Fulbrook shoes. In fact, this is the very first pair of Gucci Walter shoes I bought as a teenager at a vintage store for a hundred bucks. I had them resold many times and I still wear them happily today. They have some signs of wear, but that's character and patina that they acquired from travels around the world. I'm happy to have this piece of craftsmanship and I think it's important to show you that if you invest in quality, it will last you for a long time. And at the Gentleman's Gazette, that's what we're all about, style and quality. If you want more videos like this right here in your inbox, please sign up to our free newsletter here.